always trusting that more is on the way, always trusting that I'm stepping into alignment, always trusting that the next step is working for me. <laughs> yeah! Welcome back to another Full Cup episode. It's your girl, Ariel Simone, and this is where we have intentional conversations that help us pour into mind, body, So y'all, I'm so excited. I feel like I'm excited every single episode because we are really talking about self-healing, growing, development, taking the leap of faith, and stepping into who we want to become and just all good things. And some parts along this journey is gentle and some holds us accountable in a very rough way. Some forces us to look at ourselves like, I don't love that don't like that, gotta change that, gotta, gotta do that. (laughs) Like certain things really force us to course correct and pivot. And if you are new to this series, this is where we are reading the book, This Is How You Heal by Rihanna Wies. And if you haven't already caught up with the other Full Cup episodes, go watch those. It is what has led us here to this chapter. Last week was all about releasing, knowing when to let go and knowing how to start over and being able to start over and pivot at any moment. And this episode is all about taking the leap, knowing when to take that jump, knowing when to step into faith. So I'm really excited about this, y'all. I'm really, really excited about this. So let's get into it. And as a gentle reminder, we are drinking and pouring into ourselves. So grab yourself something hydrating, something refreshing, something that makes you feel good. It could be water, juice, agua fresca. This is mushroom coffee. Mm. Mm. It is literally so good and warm. Like it is just perfect for those colder days and it also has a little bit of ashwagandha in it so i'm feeling calm but stimulated like it's like a nice little balance but okay let's get into it right okay so we're on page 78 and this is where i left off on the last session so she begins with you have to become the kind of person who makes a living doing what they love not an amateur trying to see if they could maybe get by. You will have to stop asking for permission. You will have to stop thinking one person's perspective of you is the sum of who you are. You will have to show up again and again and again. You will have to create again and again and again. Then you will have to watch for what arrives and what remains. Watch for what works. Wait for what is effortless. Keep going until you get to a point where the slightest bit of your effort reaps a large reward and then keep going. Keep going. You are going to have to do things that other people are unwilling to do. Like what? What do you mean by that? You are going to have to stop being afraid of fluctuating income or credit card debt or bad reviews or looking dumb or staying cool and pretending like you don't care. You are going to have to care. You are going to have to believe in your vision until someone else does. You will have to hold a torch for yourself first. Period. You're going to have to hold the torch first. You got to be the first one creating the light. You got to be looking through the tunnel like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I agree. You have to hold your torch first. Okay. Then she goes, you will have to learn that we do not spontaneously find the courage to pursue what we love one day. We sense an urge a hunch, a small desire to take one step in the direction of our dreams. Then we keep going, even in the face of doubt and speculation. Then we pursue with wild open hearts, with complete commitment. The confidence you are looking for will not arrive until you begin. It will not come from mental gymnastics, comparisons, or delusions about your importance. It will come from the simple virtue of being someone who is willing to risk it all in order to live a life that feels most true to them, to create something that they care about and hope someone else might care about it too. That's all. That's the story for all of us, every last one. You don't need to find confidence to pursue what you really love. You just have to be willing to start then you will also need to be willing to stop. Overcorrecting is the opposite of creativity. Overworking is not aspirational. It's an escape mechanism. What nobody tells you is that passion and obsession are entryways to one another. You will walk a fine line every day. What nobody tells you is that doing what you love heightens your sensitivity to your work in a way that you are always in a bit denial of. Disapproval hurts in a soul-clenching kind of way because you care, even if it's hard to admit that you care. You care because this is more than a job. You care because this is more than just a means to an end. These are your most vulnerable pieces. This is who you are. 
What nobody tells you is that doing what you love almost always means doing a lot of other stuff to pay the bills so that you can carve out space and buy back time to create freely and in perfect alignment with what you want to become. What nobody tells you about doing what you love is that uncertainty holds more people back than talent or lack thereof ever could. What nobody tells you is that consistency outpaces talent. Ooh, keep going, keep going. What nobody tells you is that when you marry the two together, doing what comes effortlessly as often as you can, you hit your stride. What nobody tells you is that security is an illusion, one that most people have bought into. There are no safe jobs, paths, choices, and if they were, pursuing your dreams and having multiple forms of income would probably be safer anyway. They don't teach you that part in school. What nobody tells you about doing what you love is that you have to learn where to source your creativity from because where most people begin is with their deepest pain and where they end is in burnout. What nobody tells you is that you will have to strengthen your creative muscle to the point that you can both work but remain relatively detached. What nobody tells you is that it is the attachment that hurts. It's the expectation of what it should be or would be and by when. Because for all of the unknowns, for all of the vulnerability, for all of the days you spend staring at the path and not knowing what could be ahead, what nobody tells you is that it's worth it. Every last bit. It's worth it to exchange an illusion of security for the reality of living the way you want regaining at least some pieces of your life, at least just going for it, at least just trying. Oh my God, oh my God, she's really like, get out there and start, get out there and try, get out there and jump, get out there and just, just do it, just do it. Trying is more than what most people are willing to do anyway. I don't always love like thinking about what most people do, if I'm being honest. Like, I'm just like, okay, most people don't do that. Okay, I'm not most people. We're not most people. <laughs> I don't know if it's just me, but I'm like, we're not most people. But okay, let's see what she's going. Nobody knows what's next. Oh, okay, okay, I get that. What nobody tells you is that making money from what you love isn't selling out. It's letting your soul support you and fuel you. It's accepting that we all need income to live, and if we can do it through our passion, that's great. What nobody tells you is that though it might be outside the norm, you're not completely an outlier. More people than you can imagine are pursuing similar paths. You are not alone. You have never been. You are not a unicorn. Instead of letting your ego get hurt by this, embrace it. Connect with others going the same way. What nobody tells you is that the hardest part will be figuring out how to structure your days now that it's all up to you. Oh my God. That is so true. Being a creative entrepreneur, a holistic nutritionist, and a wellness influencer, nobody told me that my days was up to me. The way I have to structure my calendar day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, like it takes a lot of effort, a lot of discipline, a lot of structure, and a lot of feeling like I deserve this and this is what it looks like to show up. It's a lot of that. It's a lot of I deserve, I deserve, I deserve. I can do it. I can do it. I'm smart. I'm eligible. I'm adequate. It's a lot of that. It's a lot of that. And it's a lot of like self-pacing, self-reliance, self-affirmations, self-discipline. It's a lot of that. It is a lot of that. It's a lot of grace. It's a lot of compassion. It's a lot of taking your time with your time. It's a lot of, oh, it's okay. It's a lot of healing. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot in a great way, but it's a lot. It's a lot. Oh, and then she goes to say, this requires discipline. It requires vision. It requires commitment. It requires a lot of self-imposed structure. It is hard at first. Then it becomes more freeing over time. What nobody tells you is that this is not the easy way out. This is not necessarily how you opt into a life without any struggle. It's just doing something that makes the struggle worth it. <laughs> that was beautiful. That was really beautiful. So the next chapter goes, read this if you're on the brink of a breakthrough, but are afraid to take the leap. There is a path to everything you know is waiting for you, even if you don't know what that is right now. All your mind can pull from is what it's known. And if you're trying to build a life outside of that, then you're going to have to open yourself up to the possibility that not only is there a path toward it, but that it may very well lead somewhere better than you thought it would. A lot of the times things turn out way better than we could have ever imagined it. That is so true. 
when I was getting removed, forcibly removed out of my Brooklyn Brownstone apartment, I really thought like that was the end. I really had no idea what was next. And what was next was greater than I could have ever, ever imagined. I live in Mexico. The weather is beautiful. I'm eating fresh produce, quality meats. My apartment is gorgeous. Three levels, two bed, two bath, private roof. Talk to me nice. Talk to me nice. Like things just <laughs> elevated, elevated. Better than I would have ever imagined. Literally, literally, literally. So true. Then she says, sometimes we don't know because we can't know. The very fact of us knowing would disrupt the timing of what is unfolding. The very fact of us knowing would prevent us from learning the lessons that are here for us today. That lesson with the Brownstone apartment was to always be willing to let go, always be willing to release, always be willing to pivot and get up out of there. Always, always, always trusting that more is on the way. Always trusting that I'm stepping into alignment. Always trusting that the next step is working for me. Always trusting that everything is like working for me perfectly. So yes, that is very true. That is very true. That really be the lessons. And those lessons, they aren't a do we have to pay or a purgatory we are being stuck in. They are building blocks of the character of the person who is opening up to this next level of their existence. What's here for you right now contains within it the wisdom and the growth needed to unlock the next phase. Oh, yes. 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 I'm everything. I'm everything. Boom, clap. Boom, rap. Boom, rap. And it clap. <laughs> Tell me if y'all know what that's wrong. Okay, okay, okay. I hope that instead of wondering and worrying how you will ever move forward, you can simply recall all the other times you feared you never would and did. You can remember that you never would have imagined exactly what led you to the most good things in your life. And I hope that will inspire you to keep your heart open to wonder, to mystery, to the infinite unknown through which everything is beautiful and important will emerge. I hope you will break loudly, Fail towards what matters. Let yourself know deep love, even if it means you can lose it. There is no merit in holding back. Nothing gained but a life half lived. If you can say nothing else of yourself, say that you had courage. Say that at least you tried. And even if you never quite arrived, allow your legacy to be one of tenacity. One where you did not allow the fear to stop you from doing what you were born to do or having the life you were meant to experience. Oh my God. If you screw it up, you screw it up. If you get your heart smashed into a million pieces, you get your heart smashed. If you say the wrong thing, you say the wrong thing. Like that's that on that, like it's all right. Please do not allow one more moment of your brief and beautiful life to pass where you remain paralyzed beneath the fear of not doing everything just perfectly. A fear that has led you to resist doing anything meaningful at all. The truth is that the very people who fear such things so deeply are often the same ones who have the most to offer, who have the most honest hearts and willing minds. We do not come here to arrive at death untouched, unmoved, precisely as we were at the beginning. The world needs more people like you to show up bravely. Even if you never get to the other side, will you be all right if you go your entire life knowing you never even tried? Maybe the kindest possible thing you could do for yourself right now is to be honest with yourself. Trust yourself. Know that your feelings are valid and maybe they're trying to move you somewhere you've never been. Maybe the kindest possible thing you could do for yourself is to be your whole self, even if you fear you won't be accepted. Maybe the kindest thing you could do for yourself is to be open to your own soul as you can be, even if not everyone understands you. Maybe the kindest thing you can do is to be as open to your own soul as you can be, even if not everyone understands you. Maybe the kindest possible thing you can do for yourself is to stop smoothing out every feeling that moves you from the comfortable path, knowing that maybe this urge comes from somewhere and maybe it has a greater purpose. Maybe you will give someone else permission to be their honest selves. Maybe you will be living proof that more is possible. Maybe you will become the kind of guy for others that you yourself never had. Maybe you could become the example. Oh my God, yes. And maybe in the end, the kindest possible thing you can do for yourself is to know that there is nothing that holds us back 
more than the important words that went unspoken, the deep instincts that went unfelt, the callings that went unanswered. Your life is reaching towards you and maybe the kindest possible thing you can do is to reach back. Oh my God. Oh my God. Can I ask y'all, what is it in this season that you need to reach back at? What is something that you need to start approaching? What is something that you need to start responding to? What is something that you need to start stepping into? What does it mean to you when it says like life is reaching out to you and you need to reach back? What type of habits do you need to have? How do you need to show up? How do you need to reach back? What does that look like for you in this season? That's the question I really want to ask in the comments. Like, what does it look like right now? to start reaching back and pulling up to your potential. What does that mean? What does pulling up to your potential even mean to you? What is your potential? Where do we really wanna start with that? That is such a great place to start unpacking. Like, how are we meeting ourselves halfway? Then she goes on to say, as the time goes on, you will begin to see the magic in your process. You will begin to understand why things had to happen precisely the way it did. You will realize that if you did not have the exact experiences you had, you would have missed out on some essential lessons and tools and pieces of wisdom that built you into the person you are today. The person who will keep walking you forward. When you look back on the past, you can see the purpose in how everything unfolded. And I am here to tell you that one day you'll see it in what is happening right now too. You just have to keep going. One day you are going to look back on this time and realize you are always right where you were meant to be. I am a big believer in that, that we are always right where we're supposed to be all of the time and if we start paying attention to certain angel numbers or certain serendipitous moments throughout the day it becomes affirmations that yeah yeah you're exactly where you're supposed to be right now at all times and i don't know if it's just me but i always tend to think about the fact that every single job we've ever had kind of propels us into the next job into the next opportunity into the next grand opening you know what i mean like i always think about that like i used to work at dsw i used to work at a store named c wonder i used to be a model i was a personal trainer i was a nutritionist everything has strategically lined me up for the next position whether it was me learning how to be better at customer service whether it was me learning how to be a better listener how to approach things differently how to communicate effectively, just always learning something, some sort of skill to help me propel into the next opportunity. I always think about that. Like every single job I've ever had has shaped me in a way to prepare me for the next big thing. I always think about that. Even now when I'm recording, I'm like, this is preparing me for a show. This is preparing me to write a book. This is preparing me to host holistic wellness retreats. This is preparing me to host more workshops. This is preparing me to sell more physical products. This is preparing me to prepare me, to prepare me. No, 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 I'm kidding. Because this is always preparing me. This is always preparing us while also teaching us to be present in the moment and learn and adapt in real time. Because all of these lessons in this moment, we need it. We need it. As uncomfortable and nasty and gritty as it feels, like we need it. We need these lessons. And I don't know, it just has you appreciate in the present moment a little differently. Because I always think about that. Like anytime I have a hard time, I'm always just like, it did pass though. And this is why also audio journaling, video journaling, and just journaling, period, being able to track your progress, track your feelings, track your goals. It always teaches us when we look back like, I did that. And got through that. And da da like it always shows us that we get through and we go above. We always rise. I think that that's so beautiful about life that we always grow and we always propel, like always. And even if it doesn't always feel like that in real time, time will always show us why it all worked out the way it was supposed to work out. And when you constantly believe that and you constantly have evidence of that, it's easier to have faith. It's easier to believe. It's easier to take that leap. Because you already know things always work out because it undid. It undid in the past. It undid and it will again. And it will again. Like, I, that's so beautiful about life. It's honestly so fire about life. <laughs> but yeah, my bad. I went in. Okay, okay. So we're going to stop here because the next chapter is 16 ways emotionally intelligent people interpret negative feelings differently. Oof. I love that, 16 different ways. And I just feel like it's gonna teach us something new. It's gonna help us process our feelings a little bit differently. So yeah, y'all, this is the end of the 
this chapter, this is the end of this episode. Please tell me what you took away from it. What's one thing that you learned? What's one thing that you want to start doing? What's one thing that you agree with or you don't agree with? Please tell a kid. Please comment down below because I love to write back to y'all. That's literally one of my favorite things to do. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Full Cut where we pour into my body. So this is the end of this episode. Big, big, big love. Not the look of one. Not, not the look of one. <laughs> Ride the way, I know you die for nothing. What's it gonna be? G-Wag on, all depends. The gallon, ride the way, I know you. Different things that happening, schemes and packaging. In a one night for shows, I'm juggling. You're like the ocean.